Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Vile. Welcome to my A-Level Chemistry YouTube channel. The aim of this YouTube channel is all about getting you ready for your A-Level exams. And this video is going to focus on electron configurations. So it would be helpful if you've watched the video on atomic structure first. We're going to focus mainly on SPD notation. Uh, but I'll also revise the Bohr model as well, the 28818, just because it helps set the scene a little bit. And basically, I'm going to jump straight in with lots of examples and work through them, which I hope will be helpful. If you find this video helpful, remember to like it, subscribe to the channel, uh, share with your friends and keep checking back for more content. So on this slide here, I've included uh, the order with which you fill the orbitals. Uh, for different elements. Now, at GCSE, you would have learnt the circle method. So, for instance, if you take boron, which has got five electrons, you've got the nucleus in the centre, and then you have your first shell of electrons, which can hold two electrons, and then you go to your next shell, which can hold up to eight, but there's only three left over, so it would be one, two, three. So the configuration for boron would be two, three. Now, the problem with this model is firstly that it assumes a circular orbit of the electrons, which is not strictly true. But also it assumes that because it's an orbit of the nucleus, you can work out exactly where an electron will be at any given point of time, like a planet orbiting the sun. However, we can't have that level of accuracy Instead, we know the area around the nucleus where you're most likely to find an electron, and we call these the orbitals. And each orbital can hold two electrons, and there are three types of orbital that we need to know about at A level. S orbitals, P orbitals, and D orbitals. S orbitals can hold two electrons. P orbitals, there are three lots of two, so they can hold six electrons in total. And for D, it's five lots of two, making ten. And the order that we fill them in is 1s, then 2s, then 2p, then 3s, then 3p, then 4s, then 3d, and then 4p. Noting that the 3d is actually lower in energy than the 4p. So we fill them in this order. So if you have five electrons like boron has, you put two into the 1s. Now you have to show each electron as an arrow and the arrow has an orientation. So it's either going up or down. And the reason for that is we're representing the spin of the electrons. And you can either spin in a clockwise or an anti-clockwise state, hence two possible directions for the arrow. So if you put your first arrow in as going up, that means it's spinning in one direction. Your second electron must be spinning in the opposite direction. So it's 1s2. Then you go to the 2s, and that can have two. Like that, so we've used four electrons so far, and then one electron goes in the 2p. And each of these boxes represents an orbital. So the electron configuration for boron would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p1, or 2, 3 if you're using the Bohr method. When you get to carbon, you've got six electrons. So in terms of our old Bohr method, it would be 2 and then 4 in the second shell. In terms of the SPD configuration, you'd have 1s2 with the opposite spins, 2s2, and then we get to 2p. Now we have two electrons that need to go in here. And what we actually do is we put one electron in each box with the same spin. And we would put one electron in each of these boxes before we start going back and double filling each box. And that's to minimize repulsion of electrons. So for carbon, you'd have them in different boxes, but with the same or parallel spin. So the configuration would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. When we get to nitrogen, the Bohr configuration would be 2, 5. Remember, the second shell can hold up to eight electrons. 
and you'd have 1s2, 2s2, that's used four of the electrons, so we've got three electrons left. So we put one in each box within the 2p, all with parallel spin. So the configuration would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p, 3. Get a bit more interesting when we get to oxygen. Oxygen has got eight electrons. Its bore configuration would be two and then six. So that's 1s2, 2s2. And that leaves us with four electrons to go in the 2p. So we start off, as we said, by one electron in each box with the same spin. And only once we put one electron in each box do we go back and start double filling. But when we double fill each box or each orbital, we need to give it the opposite spin. So its configuration would be as shown there. So that's 1s2, 2s2, 2p, 4. When we get to sodium, we've got 11 electrons. So its bore configuration would be 2, 8. And now that's full, that can't hold any more. So we then start the next shell. So 2, 8, 1. So you'd have 1s2, 2s2. And then we've got six electrons to go into the 2p. So we start off, as I say, put one in each box and then go back and double fill. And so far we've used 10 electrons, so one needs to go into the 3s. So its electron configuration would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. On the next example, it's a little bit bigger. We've got iron. Now, iron has got 26 electrons. So in the Bohr method, it would be 2, then 8, then 8. The fourth shell can hold 18, but we haven't got 18 electrons. We've so far used 18. So therefore, there are 8 that can go into the fourth shell. So 2, 8, 8, 8, giving you 26 in total. So let's work out what the configuration would be based on our diagram. You've got 1s2 then 2s2, then 2p6, then go to 3s2, and so far we've used 12. So we need 6 going in the 3p, so that's 18, then the 4s, that's 20, and that leaves us with six electrons left to go in the 3D. So we put one in each box. And at this stage, we can start going back and double filling with the opposite spin. So its configuration would be as follows. If you were to write that out as the SPD notation, it would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d6. Right, chromium. Chromium is an unusual element. Uh, I'm just going to focus on the SPD configurations from now on to save time. But chromium has got 24 electrons. Let me start off by showing you the common misconception with chromium. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. This is all fine so far. The, con uh, the misunderstanding comes when you get to the 3d. 3s2, 3p6. 
So most people would say, oh, it must be 4s2, 3d4. And that is wrong, uh, e even though it seems pretty logical. What actually happens is, because the 4s and the 3d orbitals are very similar in energy, what chromium does is it promotes one electron from the 4s into the 3d and the reason that it does that is because it allows then for a half full d orbital which is much more stable so this is actually the correct answer for chromium and if you were having to write it out it would be 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 4s1 3d5. There are only two elements you need to be aware of that behave in this sort of sneaky fashion and chromium is one of them. The other one that you need to be aware of is copper and we'll see that on the next slide. So copper has got 29 electrons. The misconception the misconception for copper is that it would have the configuration as shown on the screen, 4s2, 3d9. But actually, it does a very similar thing to what chromium does, and it promotes the electron from the 4s into the 3d to give you 4s1, 3d10, which is far more stable. You don't need to be aware of the reasons why this happens for chromium and copper, but you do need to remember that it does happen. So its configuration would be 1s2. 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1, 3d10. In this next section of the video, we're going to focus on the SPD configurations of ions. So if you take something like the sodium ion, so sodium has got 11 electrons. So a sodium atom has got 11 electrons. So you'd expect its Bohr configuration to be 2, 8, 1. Now what we find is that sodium is particularly reactive because it wants to get rid of this one electron. So it loses that one electron in its outer shell to form 28, and it therefore forms the Na1 plus ion as its stable ion. So when it comes to the SPD configuration, it would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So the sodium ion would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, or 28 in terms of the Bohr method. So the general pattern is that the group 1 metals form 1 plus ions, they lose their outer shell electron. Let's go across to group 2, to the magnesium ion. Now magnesium, a magnesium atom, has got 12 electrons. So you'd expect its configuration to be 2, 8, 2 if it was a magnesium atom. But what magnesium does is it loses the two outer shell electrons to give the electron configuration 2, 8, which gives the Mg 2 plus iron. If we lose two negative electrons, we become two positive. And therefore, the SPD configuration would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Now, if you take oxygen as, as an example next, an oxygen ion. Now, oxygen atoms, if you have an oxygen atom, has got eight electrons. 
So its configuration would be two, six, two electrons in the first shell, then six. Now it wants to gain two electrons to have a full outer shell. So it forms the O2 minus ion, which has the configuration two, eight. So that would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So oxygen likes to gain two electrons to have a full outer shell, so therefore it forms the 2 minus ion 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Whereas something like chlorine, a uh, chlorine atom has got. 17 electrons. So chlorine atom has got 17 electrons. So its configuration would have been 2, 8, 7. And hopefully you can see there that it wants to gain one electron to have a full outer shell. So it forms the Cl minus ion, 1 minus, where it has gained one electron, and that's 2, 8. Eight. So its configuration would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, that accounts for 10 of the electrons, and therefore 3s2, 3p6. So what we find is that the group seven elements like to gain one electron to form one minus ions. And in chlorine's case, that's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Things get a bit more challenging when we get into the transition metals. Now the transition metals always lose electrons because they are metals. And what you might find is it's helpful to write out the SPD configuration for the atom, and then we start to take away the electrons. So if we take the iron 2 plus iron, well, iron itself, if it was an iron atom, has got 26 electrons. So that would be 1s2, 2s2. 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and then 4s2, 3d6. However, we need to remove two electrons because it's the 2 plus ion. Well, actually, what happens is the 4s empties before the 3d. So the actual answer is we remove the two electrons from the 4s, and that leaves you with the following configuration. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d6. So we empty from the 4s before we empty from the 3d. Just two more examples now. Do you remember copper was one of the sneaky elements? So copper atoms have got 29 electrons. And it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Okay. 3s2, 3p6. And then what we had was 4s1, 3d10. And we need to remove two electrons. So what we do is we remove the electron from the 4s, and then we remove one from the 3d. So what that leaves you with is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 3s2, 3p6, 3d9. And one last example. 
uh, the chromium three plus ion. Now chromium was the other sneaky element. Chromium has uh, 24 electrons. So chromium atom, 24 electrons. So its configuration would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Three S two, three P six, four S one, three D five. However, we need to remove three electrons, so we move from the four S, and then we'd need to remove two from the three D. So the actual configuration of the chromium 3 plus ion would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d3. Anyway, I hope that was helpful in terms of drawing Bohr configurations and SPD configurations. If you find it helpful, remember to like, uh, subscribe, share with your friends and keep checking back for more content. See you next time.